Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. Um, it's been a little while, not too long, but a little while. Um, in the last tutorial, we created some cool plastic type with a, like a glass front, uh, and I shot Steve. Don't worry about him, he's fine, aren't you? Yeah. Good. Right. Um, this one uh, we're going to do now, quite a quick one, but it's basically for a specific job that I had recently. I needed to create uh, a thing on a spring, and uh, hunting around I couldn't find a good way of actually making it so it's visible because cinema has a great built-in spring system which you can use which is fantastic but it doesn't render the actual spring um, and I found a way um, to do it using like spline dynamics and constraints but then it doesn't utilize the dynamic system so it's not it's on it's not so good if you want you want it to be dynamic um, and I couldn't really find any you know, specific information on how to do this, so I had a little play, and it turns out it's actually quite easy uh, to make a pretty convincing looking thing. So let's hop on it and I'll show you where we begin. So this is the, the, the straightforward one I've created. Uh, if I just hit play, I just move this down and you can see that that's quite cool. That's quite a convincing little spring effect, and if you bang it too much, you'll break it. <laughs> anyway, right, so that's what we're gonna create. And it's not too difficult. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is start off by creating a cube. This is going to be the base. So so we don't get confused with things, we'll just call this base. All right, and then we're going to hit T and just shrink that down a bit because it doesn't need to be quite so big. Uh, the next thing I'm going to create is going to be the uh, the cylinder on the top. That's the bit that's moving up and down. So we create a cylinder. There we go. And uh, let's just grab that handle there and shrink the height down, and we'll just put that in so it's smaller than the cube. Okay, brilliant, right? Okay, right. we'll shrink that down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's fine. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is add the dynamics tags to the to them. So we've got a, a rigid body tag for the cylinder and a collider body tag for the base. So the collider body is holding that solid. The rigid body is meaning that this one can move around. If I press play, you'll see what I mean. There we go. So that's the first bit done. The next thing we need to create is the spring. So we go to simulate dynamics and spring. Now place this between these just for so that we can see what we're doing. Um, now with the spring highlighted, you'll see you've got a couple of options down here. Object A will do as the base. You just drag that in. Object B will do as the cylinder. And then if we press play, okay, so that's not quite what we want. That's a bit weird. Let's give ourselves a few more frames as well. Let's just put 900 in there. Oops. If you grab that, oh, if you can actually grab that arrow, there you go. We can extend the frames. Okay, so let's rewind that. So what's happening here? So definitely that's not right. So let's undo this. Um, something we want to do is obviously stop it from swinging around side to side. We only want it to go up and down. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. One is you can just create a uh, a tube, make it the exact size of the cylinder or just ever so slightly bigger, turn it into a collider body and then sort of hide it so that you can't see it and then that will kind of guide it. But that's a bit of a messy way. Um, the other way is you can actually use is a connector. Um, so we go to simulate dynamics connector and let's put that in between as well. So we've got our spring and our connector. The same thing again. So object A will do as the base, object B will do as the cylinder. All right, so now like that, that doesn't do anything because it's currently set as a hinge. So we need to change that to slider. And now you can see the problem is, is that it's going horizontally. So again, it's not doing anything. So we need to rotate this connector, press R, and just bring that around. If you hold down shift, it'll move it in nice increments like so. And then we'll just go back to select mode and try again. And there we go. Right, so we've got something else happening now. Now the first thing that you've just noticed is it just flies straight through. This isn't right at all. But what we can do is hit play, leave it playing, go to the spring settings, and we can actually turn up and down the rest length. And we should see that actually changing. There we go. In real time. There we go. Look, see if you just I'm just holding the up arrow, and you can see that that's actually now moving up and down. So we can actually move that around in real time and get it to how we want. So maybe put the stiffness up a little bit something like that. The damping's fine as it is. Okay, 
So we've got our spring, and if I just create uh, one more cylinder, let's just grab this one, hold control and drag, and it makes a copy of it. Move it up, press T, shrink it down a bit. We're also going to change the rigid body tag, simulation, uh, collider body. That way it's not going to fall. Um, but what I can do is press play, and I can actually, there, see, so you can see that bit. So that's the spring setup. Now, like I was saying, this is the problem, is that you've got no, you don't see the spring. If you click on spring, you can see it again. If you go to display, you can press the always visible button, and then no matter what you do, you'll be able to see that spring. Uh, so let's just move this, boom, 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 see? Um, however, when you then press render, there's nothing in there. This is a problem. So what you want to do is create um, a spring. So the way we're going to do that is uh, I'm just going to name these quickly so we don't get confused. So this we'll call top, and this we'll just call basher. <laughs> um, we're going to create, <clears throat> excuse me, a helix, boom, boom, like that. Now at the moment that's on the wrong angle, so we're going to change the plane to XZ, and that's looking pretty much better already. Uh, it's obviously far too wide at the moment, so the start radius we can bring that in. That's probably going to be something, want to be something like twenty and the end radius probably 20 as well well you want them the same unless you want your spring to get bigger or smaller towards the end but obviously that's up to you uh, so that's a little bit smaller you can see so we'll maybe make them 25 and I'm just gonna go back into spring and just switch this one off so we don't see it for the moment right there we go we can just see our helix uh, so height we want to put that up a bit so it's up to around about the middle of the other bit and the end angle that's the important one here so we turn that right up and as you can see that's now making a spring there we go now again if you just hit render it still doesn't show anything and that's because this is just a spline and splines don't render so what we're going to do is use a sweep nerves so hold down alt and select sweep nerves while having the helix selected and it automatically puts it in for you and now basically what you want to do is create a circle and that will follow the first object with the second object and create geometry so if you're not quite sure what I mean I'm just going to shrink the circle down and then we're going to place the circle into the sweep nerves now because it's the wrong way up it's trying to wrap the helix around the circle that's not what we want we actually want the other way around now so that's a bit closer but our circle is obviously too big so we're just going to shrink our circle down and there you go we have now what looks like a spring which if we render, we can see. Brilliant! But there's not quite there yet because if we press play, you can see when we move our basher, the spring is staying still. That's no good to anyone. So we need what we need to do is basically make the height of the spring follow this top. All right, so the way we're gonna do that is use a little bit of espresso. Ah! Don't worry, this is so simple, it's brilliant. Right, okay, so just uh, choose an item. So we'll do it on the uh, the sweep nerves and select Cinema 4D Espresso. We'll put it on this sweep nerves here. Right, um, and then this will give us this little window. Now, all we're gonna do is just dump a couple of nodes in here. The first thing is the top. We're gonna place that into our Espresso window. And the next thing is the helix. So that's our visible spring. Okay, so firstly on the little red dot, select the top. And what we want to do is get the tops, uh, coordinates, and position. And then in the helix, we want uh, the object properties and height. And then literally we're drawing a line from there to there. Now what happens, we can just close this. So you press play, and you can see we've actually got a working spring. And that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? <laughs> So perhaps we'll do something, uh, make something, you know, look a little bit nicer with this. Let's just get rid of that basher. Um, let's uh, create a, a scene. So uh, to do that, we I always use my Infidio Pro, uh, which you can find out more about from my website. It's uh, just basically an automatic Infinity Studio. See, without putting any real effort in, this is now lit. Uh, so we can now texture our little. Uh, Thing. So let's first of all put a texture on the spring. Um, reflection, we want a reflection on there. Turn off the specular and we'll place that on our sweep nerves. Um, we'll just create a plastic for the bottom, so something like a nice plastic white. Uh, specular off, reflection on, 
uh, for now uh, turn that down turn that one down a bit there we go we've got a nice plastic white um, we'll make a copy of that and we'll do a black version as well something like that and we'll put that on the top there we go um, on the top I'm just going to go to caps fill it and then just make that look a little bit more roundy uh, just on the edge uh, the same with the base I always like to have at least some fillet uh, I don't like completely jagged edges so just a little little bit um, I'm also going to change the Infidio floor color uh, just going to make that a kind of white with a very subtle grey uh, gr uh, vignette going on and let's just have a quick look see how that looks so that's looking pretty groovy um, I'm not sure about the black actually I'm gonna make that I'm kinda of liking the clinical thing going on here so I'm gonna go for a, just a grey let's just have a quick look at that ah that's much better cool okay um, now obviously the uh, for the chrome really you want to go to your settings and put your anti-aliasing up uh, to something like best and then that's going to give you much nicer looking reflections inside of your spring but obviously that's going to hit your uh, render time um, but one thing I have found uh, is the quite often especially when using Infidio the um, the physical render is much faster and because you can build in the depth of field straight into it it's much nicer so I just use progressive when I'm setting a scene up um, and that just gives me a real quick idea um, and then it obviously it will keep going through it um, because it's set to progressive mode it will just keep sort of pumping through it uh, and get it better each time but then obviously when you do a render if it's for an animation you set it to adaptive put it on medium quality it takes a little bit longer but um, it, it, always, it generally comes out really nicely and like I say the, the uh, depth of field in it is brilliant okay so now that we've got that the next thing I'm going to do is let's uh, let's see this what we're gonna do let's uh, just create uh, a big cube that we're going to just have fall on it and see what it does boing Whee! so our cube is maybe a bit too big um, let's shrink the cube down a little bit boing 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 <laughs> that's brilliant I'll go watch that all day alright so let's just give the cube uh, a bit of a fillet edge not that much uh, five nah. three cool and we'll give that the white plastic it's a very clinical scene this is there we go cool okay and rewind and yeah basically that's it um, so uh, this will oh, I haven't rendered this out yet but I'll render this out and make this the preview so that you can sort of see what it's looking like but uh, just to give you an idea we can just uh, do a render at that point there or something like that so we can just see what that's looking like so that's looking pretty groovy um, yeah I think that's about all we can do with that one. It's a, a fairly quick little tutorial. Um, hopefully you'll get some use out of that. Uh, and I'd love to see what you do. Don't forget, as always, check out the site, www.ratemyfuneral.com. That was rate, by the way. Um, like I say, if you're interested in, in Infidio, um, it's uh, available from the website. Uh, it's just a tool. There's a pro version and a normal version. The normal version is just the Infinity Studio, but the pro version adds a lighting in it into it. So literally, you just create your scene, put it in it, and bang, it's lit. Um, you can then, if you do want to go and configure the lighting, all the settings are all in the uh, control panel for Infidio. You can configure it all to, to your heart's content, um, and it's all just sort of there. You haven't got to sort of do anything ahead of time. Um, and there you go. Okay, so that's it, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.